What if training AI models with more data didn't make them smarter, but made them worse? That's the warning coming from a group of researchers at top institutions, including Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, Harvard, and Princeton. They've identified a flaw that could fundamentally disrupt how large language models are built. A flaw that doesn't just affect small labs, but may already be baked into the world's most powerful AI systems, from open source tools to proprietary giants like GPT-4 and Gemini. This isn't about hallucinations or bias. This is something deeper, an internal breakdown in the model's ability to adapt, hidden beneath the surface of its training data. The research calls it catastrophic overtraining, and it challenges one of the core assumptions in AR Dorai that more training always equals better performance. Let's break down what they found and why it might reshape everything from enterprise AI to general purpose assistance. The discovery that shook the AI world in March 2025, a paper titled Overtrained Language Models Are Harder to Fine Tune, was published on AR Criv, an open access platform for scientific research. The lead author, Jacob Mitchell Springer, along with co-authors from multiple major research institutions, introduced the term catastrophic overtraining to describe a pattern observed in large language model development. The assumption in most LLM projects is simple. Keep feeding the model more data for longer periods and it'll keep getting better. But the study's findings directly contradict this. According to the researchers, after a certain point in the pre-training process, models become significantly more difficult to fine tune. And worse, those models tend to lose performance during downstream tasks like instruction tuning, even when trained on high quality curated data. The result is not just a plateau in capability, it's a measurable degradation. And this isn't theoretical. The team demonstrated the issue in a real world model, the OLMO experiment that proved it. To test their theory, the researchers focused on OLMO-1B, a 1 billion parameter open source model developed by the Allen Institute for AI2. This model was well suited for controlled experimentation, large enough to reflect realistic conditions, but still manageable enough to train multiple versions from scratch. They created two separate versions of Olmo 1B1, trained on 2.3 trillion tokens, and another on 3 trillion tokens. That's roughly a 30% increase in training data, which would typically be expected to produce a more capable and adaptable model. But that's not what happened. After instruction tuning, an essential process where a model is refined to better follow human prompts, the version trained on 3 trillion tokens actually underperformed compared to its smaller counterpart. In several standard language model benchmarks, the larger model showed up to a 3% drop in performance. More importantly, this wasn't an isolated result. The performance decline was consistent across various evaluation tasks and continued through further stages of fine tuning. The researchers identified an inflection point around 2.5 trillion tokens. Beyond that threshold, additional pre-training not only stopped providing benefits, it actively harmed the model's adaptability. These findings reveal a crucial trade-off. While more pre-training might slightly improve the raw capabilities of a base model, it can simultaneously make that model more difficult and sometimes even counterproductive to fine tune for specific downstream applications. Why overtraining breaks models? So what's actually happening under the hood? The researchers identified a phenomenon they call progressive sensitivity. This means that as pre-training continues past a certain point, the model's internal parameters, essentially the numerical values that define its understanding of language, become increasingly fragile. The longer a model is trained on massive token sets, the more tightly its parameters get locked into the specific statistical patterns of that data. When that happens, even small updates like instruction tuning, adapting to new modalities, or adding Gaussian noise can disturb its balance. This sensitivity leads to what the researchers describe as forgetting. In simple terms, the model starts losing previously acquired strengths when you try to add new ones. This is especially important for companies and developers relying on fine tuning. If your model becomes too sensitive, you can't adapt it effectively without causing performance drop-offs in other areas. This is particularly dangerous for multi-purpose models designed to handle diverse downstream tasks like summarizing emails one moment and coding in Python the next. What's more, this sensitivity isn't a bug in specific architectures. It's a structural consequence of long-term training. 
The study used simplified theoretical models like linear networks to confirm that this fragility is mathematically inevitable if pre-training continues without the right constraints. In other words, this isn't something that can be patched in post. It's a built-in risk in the way large-scale models are currently developed. And this fragility doesn't just affect academic research models. It has implications at the highest level of AI development, real-world consequences for AI developers. The AI field is dominated by the belief that scaling up is the key to better performance. GPT-3, GPT-4, Claude, Gemini, and others have all pushed the boundaries in terms of model size, data set scale, and training time. Many of these models are rumored to be trained on upwards of 10 trillion tokens, but exact details are often undisclosed. If catastrophic overtraining applies universally, which current data suggests it might, then some of the largest models already deployed in production may be operating past their optimal thresholds. And that means every subsequent fine-tuning step could be shaving off effectiveness instead of enhancing it. This could explain inconsistencies users report with fine-tuned models. For example, when ChatGPT receives updates or new plugins and suddenly starts behaving less predictably. Or when instruction-following capabilities improve in one version and regress in the next. These could be symptoms of models that are becoming progressively harder to refine. The issue isn't limited to commercial models. Open source LLMs like LLMA and Mistral are also scaling aggressively. If their pre-training strategies don't account for overtraining thresholds, developers fine tuning these models for domain specific applications like legal research, healthcare, or education may find themselves hitting diminishing returns. For organizations investing in AI as part of their workflow, this discovery adds a new layer of complexity. The assumption that more data and more compute will always lead to better performance no longer holds true without qualification. Are big tech's billion dollar models at risk? One of the most pressing questions raised by this research is, how much does this flaw apply to today's largest commercial AI models? OpenAI's GPT-4, Anthropic's Claude 3, Google's Gemini 1.5, Meta's LLMA 3, and Mistral's Mixed Trial series have all been trained using massive token counts, often speculated to be in the range of 10 trillion tokens or more. But none of these companies disclose the exact scale, token thresholds, or training inflection points of their models. This lack of transparency makes it difficult to assess whether some of the world's most powerful LLMs are already overtrained beyond the safe zone. But there are signs that align with what the study describes. For example, OpenAI users have noticed cases where newer versions of ChatGPT demonstrate improved logic or instruction following, while losing performance in areas like creativity or memory handling. Anthropic's Claude models, despite being widely praised for alignment and safety, have occasionally shown instability when integrated into third-party applications, leading to performance regressions. And Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro, while excelling in tasks like long context understanding, has faced reports of inconsistent reasoning under fine-tuned workflows, especially when models are used across multimodal tasks involving text and image inputs. These fluctuations could be a side effect of tuning models that have already surpassed their adaptability thresholds. What's concerning is that if these models are suffering from catastrophic overtraining, no amount of fine tuning or post hoc patching can fully undo it. And since the issue stems from the depth and duration of pre-training itself, it's not something that can be fixed by modifying downstream pipelines or adding more data. In other words, it's possible that some of the industry's most expensive models have already traded scale for stability without realizing it. Can this flaw be fixed? The research team didn't just identify the problem. They also explored a range of mitigation strategies to address it. However, none of these approaches offered a complete solution. Among the techniques tested were lowering fine-tuning learning rates, applying weight decay, using regularization methods, reducing tuning batch sizes, and carefully selecting instruction data for downstream tasks. While these methods helped delay the onset of performance degradation, they were not able to eliminate it entirely. Even with these adjustments, models that had been pre-trained beyond the 2.5 trillion token threshold consistently underperformed after fine-tuning when compared to those trained on less data. This presents a fundamental trade-off for developers and model architects. 
On one hand, longer pre-training can result in a stronger base model with better raw capabilities. On the other hand, it significantly increases the risk that those capabilities will deteriorate during fine-tuning. The study also highlights several open questions for future research. For instance, could the choice of optimizer, such as Adam W. versus Lion, affect how quickly overtraining sets in? And does the distribution or quality of training data play a measurable role in minimizing sensitivity? Another potential avenue involves rethinking the pre-training objective itself, perhaps by mixing different objectives or incorporating adaptability mechanisms earlier in the training process. But as of now, there is no universal solution. This means that every new model, whether open source or proprietary, must treat catastrophic overtraining as a structural limitation to be managed carefully. Failing to do so could result in models that look impressive in theory, but fall short when applied to real-world scenarios. What this means for the future of AI. This discovery comes at a pivotal moment in AI development. As global competition drives the race to scale models larger and train them longer, the industry has largely operated under the belief that more is better. But the findings on catastrophic overtraining challenge that assumption, introducing a critical limit to the benefits of continued pre-training. Beyond a certain threshold, increasing token counts may undermine a model's adaptability, particularly in instruction tuning, multimodal tasks, and real-world deployment. This shifts the focus from raw scale to stability in high-stakes domains like healthcare, law, robotics, and education. The ability to fine-tune models reliably becomes just as important as building strong base models. The research suggests that understanding pre-training threshold, sensitivity, and tuning resilience could become central to future AI development. Follow-up work is already in motion. Institutions like ETF Zurich and Berkeley AI Research are investigating whether newer architectures, such as mixture of experts and retrieval augmented generation, face similar overtraining vulnerabilities. As the field evolves, this flaw may play a defining role in shaping how future systems are built. And as we move toward models trained on 10 or even 20 trillion tokens, one question remains. How do we know when we've gone too far? With no universal answers yet, one thing is clear. Training alone won't determine a model's success. Balancing power with adaptability will be key to what comes next. If you've made it this far, let us know what you think in the comments section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.